Dear students, in this module, we're going to see how can we move towards visualizing the structure of a protein. Multiple amino acids, they come together to make a protein and that they have the peptide bond to bring them together and that these peptide bonds are planar and rigid in nature. However, two of such planes, that is two peptide bond planes, they are combined, they are linked by an alpha carbon. So if these two planes can rotate, then they can take phi or psi angles depending on how, which dihedral angle you look. Now, there are limits on what these phi and psi angles can range between and therefore if you know the range of the phi and psi angles for specific amino acids, then you can reconstruct and visualize a protein structure. Each alpha carbon, beta carbon, nitrogen, they form the backbone of the entire protein. How do you start? to solve the problem of visualizing a protein. We know that there are R side chains attached onto the alpha carbon and that they also play a part in the conformation or the visualization of the protein. More importantly, which element from these three do you select to actually visualize the protein? We know that the alpha carbon is very important in this visualization process and in fact we only consider the positions of alpha carbons as they belong to the backbone as well as linking the R side chain. We're going to see why the alpha carbons are important towards visualizing the protein in the following example. In this example you can see a linear protein so this is the N terminus and this is the C terminus and you can have the N, the alpha carbon and the beta carbon atoms here and we know that there is a very big side chain attached onto the alpha carbon. It's also called the R group. So if you move along these three atoms, nitrogen, alpha carbon and beta carbon, this pattern repeats throughout the backbone of the protein if you move along it. So somehow if you were to be told that the alpha carbon is positioned at a specific coordinate given by x, y and z then you could place the position of this alpha carbon at these coordinates followed by the alpha carbon in the follow up and then the next one and then the next one. So, if you were told the alpha carbon positions of each of these uh, elements, then you can draw a backbone structure. So, if you look at the planar bonds here, then you can clearly see three side groups R1, R2, R3, and this is fixed and rigid. And this peptide bond is also fixed and rigid. So the only rotation can happen is along these two bonds. So alpha carbon is very important in order to determine the backbone position in a protein. Because the alpha carbon is right here in the middle as you can see in the blue circle. So if you were to know the position of all alpha carbons you could easily plot the backbone of a protein. Here, I show you an example of how a protein structure looks if you just link the positions of various alpha carbons in order in the backbone of the protein. So starting from the first alpha carbon, you move along the alpha carbons and you can clearly see that this is the first alpha carbon, this is the second, this is the third, here is the fourth and you keep tracing the path of these alpha carbons and you can construct the entire 
skeleton of the protein. In this figure here on the right side, you see it in greater detail. So the important message here is that if you were to take the positions of alpha carbons and you trace them in order of their occurrence within the protein sequence, then you can have a whole backbone structure for the protein. And if you want to visualize the protein, then of course you can add the R groups onto the alpha carbons and see how the protein conformation looks like.